Good morning. Welcome to the ABC's coverage of Anzac Day commemorations here in the Northern Territory. I'm Melissa McKay. We're broadcasting this morning across ABC TV, local radio and Facebook Live platforms uh, for coverage of the street parade, which is just about to get underway in the Darwin CBD. I'm joined this morning by Lieutenant Commander Simone Patterson, who commands HMAS Childers here in Darwin. Simone, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you, Mel. I'm very happy to be here. This is, uh, Anzac Day is obviously quite a significant day um, for everyone uh, either in the military or, or has connections to the military. Can you tell me a little bit about what uh, Anzac Day means for you? Uh, I think Anzac Day is a fantastic opportunity to just take a break from the day-to-day -day normal life and reflect on uh, not only for people in uniform, all of those who've come before us and the over 100,000 Australians who've died, uh, to serve our country, but also um, I like to reflect on what service means, uh, what, it, what being in the service has offered me and, and what it's required of me. And you've been in the military since about 2004? That's right, now. What was it that, uh, that made you decide to, to join the Navy? Uh, I came from a, a sort of a military family. Both my parents served in the Navy, that's how they met, uh, and my brother served. And uh, having left university, I was at a bit of a loose end and Dad suggested, why don't you try the Navy for a few years? And then I kind of joined, fell in love and forgot to leave. <laughs> So we're just waiting for um, the march to get underway in uh, in the city this morning. You would have uh, taken part in in marches um, before, and um, and I guess would would normally be out there um, if yes. you weren't joining us here. Um, I guess what uh, you know, have there been any sort of standout marches or Anzac Day commemorations that that you've been a part of? Yeah, there have been over the years. I think the best one would be 2005 as part of the crew of HMS Shepparton. Uh, as a young midshipman, uh, we all flew to the rural town of Shepparton in Victoria and were hosted uh, for the weekend by the town. And it was just amazing to see uh, the reception from the, rural, particularly the rural Australian communities, how much they come out in support of the of the troops. And it was a really special experience. Yeah, and Darwin's one of those uh, those cities that's um, quite a, a, a military town it as well. Is. And so we're seeing um, people coming and, and lining the streets uh, in the CBD this morning. The march is just getting underway there now. Um, we're seeing the uh, NT police leading this morning's um, parade. Um, and we can see there behind them uh, the Bushmaster um, armoured vehicles. Simone, you know a little bit about the um, Bushmasters. What can you tell us uh, about them? Uh, well, I'm uh, not an expert on land ops and I'm certain I'll be corrected on this by someone who wears khaki. Um, the Landmaster, uh, Bushmasters are a uh, protective mobility vehicle. So what they are very good at is getting troops around the battlefield to where they need to go and keeping them safe while they're doing it. So they're uh, taking part in today's march uh, in recognition of their recent service in the Middle East. There's two of them um, in today's um, parade, one uh, at the front and another at the rear. Uh, we should also be able to see coming in behind um, the NT police there, um, the whaler horse being led by Jeanette Wilson um, coming in along Nucky Street there. Now, the whaler horses were an essential part of Australia's light horse regiments in World War I. They were popular because of their steady natures and easy gait. Um, this one here is wearing uh, authentic military saddle. Um, it's a 1916 issue bit uh, and it was given to Jeanette Wilson who's leading the horse there um, by Jared Archibald who found it in the Simpson Desert while on a field excursion from the museum. Wow, that's quite special. And uh, Miss Wilson's also carrying the 1914 military issue bugle. Uh, that's in memory of an old friend of hers, Bernie Bliss. Great to see lots of people uh, lining the streets there. Oh, they've all just looked up. Oh. The flyover uh, from an F-35 uh, has just come through. 
Um, it looks like we've heard it after we've uh, after we've seen it. So those people down uh, watching the parade on the street would have had a great show down there. Yeah, that uh, F-35 uh, came all the way from um, from Catherine at RAF Tyndall, uh, flown from 75 Squadron. And we're seeing here the um, disabled veterans uh, coming through on some military vehicles there. Uh, these veterans come from all conflicts, uh, from World War II to present day. Um, these servicemen and women are, are uh, either invalided or, or in health or in ill health um, and unable to, to march. So they're, they're taking part in these, uh, these spectacular vehicles. And coming in behind uh, the veterans, we can see the Darwin RSL uh, sub-branch contingent uh, coming through. They're being led by Colonel Jeff Dunn, who is an RSL patron. So I think they're being uh, led in front just by the uh, Darwin City Brass Band there, Mel. Uh, a band that's uh, been formed since 1981, um, with 30 to 40 members uh, around the Darwin area. some younger members in that team. Now we are looking at the Gallipoli torch that's just come uh, coming in now as well. That's being carried by Sergeant Dave Doolan uh, from the 1st Brigade headquarters here in Darwin. And escorting him is the uh, official flag party from the uh, service cadet organisations uh, carrying the flags, the Australian, New Zealand and uh, the Union Jack, uh, marking the flags that our Anzac troops fought under in Gallipoli. So following the Darwin City Brass Band, there is the um, RSL sub-branch. Uh, these veterans uh, are not wearing uniforms. We can see they're all um, former service men and women. Um, and a lot of them uh, come from all sorts of walks of life and enjoy the company and, and friendship that comes with, uh, with being a, a returned serviceman. I suppose that's a, uh, a, a mateship that, um, that you wouldn't really get anywhere else. Uh, no, and it never it never dies. Uh, you'll see from there medals being worn from World War II, uh, Korea, Vietnam, Iraq and all the way through to Afghanistan. It's great to see so many young people uh, lining the streets and watching watching the parade this morning. It's great that so many people are able uh, to come out and watch the parade, the parade this year. Uh, yeah, it's, it's very special, especially after the last couple of years. It's nice to be out in force in support of Anzac Day to commemorate again. Um, you can see some flags there from some of the other Veterans Association, including the Veterans Association of the NT with the uh, orange band and the yellow band. And it looks like we're about to see a flyover from uh, three uh, Tiger helicopters flying along Nucky Street there. Uh, yes, those helicopters are based out at uh, uh, Robertson Barracks are flown from the 1st Aviation Regiment. It's got a uh, fairly long and distinguished history uh, in our military, serving in most campaigns, in nearly all campaigns since Vietnam. Quite a spectacular sight. Uh, we're very lucky to be able to see those. Uh, coming through the city and there we can see the uh, Prime Minister Scott Morrison uh, watching the parade here alongside uh, some other uh, some other uh, guests and now we're starting to see the Navy contingent um, come through Simone can you tell us um, this is your area of this expertise is. 
um, you might see some some uh, some familiar faces in in there. I imagine. It looks like some familiar faces in there. This contingent is made up of staff from HMAS Coonawarra, which is our uh, shore establishment down in the Larrakia Defence Precinct, and their mission is to support the patrol boat uh, force that operates out of there. And you'll also see uh, sailors um, in the patrol boat force um, from the ship's companies of Ararat, Armadale, Glenelg, uh, and Larrakia. So there's a, a lot of uh, a lot of navy uh, personnel down there, and obviously doing a very important job. Uh, we're also seeing the army contingent now uh, coming through. These guys are from uh, the 1st Brigade, which is based here in Darwin, um, as well as parts of the 1st Brigade also uh, based down in South Australia. Um, 1st Brigade is commanded by Brigadier Nicholas Foxall, who uh, started, uh, took command of 1st uh, Brigade not long ago. Yes, and 1st Brigade has a very long, distinguished history, uh, first being established as part of the AIF uh, back in 1914, and uh, their units have fought um, in the, the campaign at Gallipoli and part of the troops that went ashore on the morning of the 25th of April. And units of the 1st Brigade have been involved in every uh, major conflict that Australia has been involved in uh, since, since 1915, which is uh, quite phenomenal, really. Um, a lot of men and women are part of 1st Brigade here and uh, a lot of their families would be, would be watching on uh, with a lot of pride this morning, I'm sure. Yeah, absolutely. It's great to see such a, uh, a large contingent um, of 1st Brigade marching this morning. Obviously, the last couple of years, uh, when we have been able to have um, have a parade, um, the numbers have been capped uh, for the last little while, and so it's great to see so many people uh, able to get out and march along Nucky Street this morning. Uh, yeah, it really is. It looks like we've got some service working dogs participating in the uh, uh, the uh, march, and I think they will be coming from the uh, the Fifth Battalion uh, uh, from the uh, Royal Australian Regiment. Lots of clapping and cheers coming from uh, from people watching on on the street. Absolutely, it looks like that's the uh, the fifth battalion uh, finishing up there. The fifth battalion was formed back in 1965 um, and uh, had very distinguished service through Vietnam and through uh, through Timor, Iraq, and Afghanistan. We're starting to see the uh, Royal Australian Air Force uh, coming in now. This is uh, 13 Squadron from the city of Darwin. This squadron was formed back in 1940. They were based uh, at the Civil Aerodrome on Ross Smith Avenue, um, but was uh, disbanded not long after World War II um, before it was reformed back in 1989. Uh, yes, they, they're called the uh, number 13 squadron for Darwin uh, and they're, some of their battle honours include uh, campaigns in the Pacific uh, and uh, the Battle of Darwin uh, starting from 1941. A lot of people uh, around the top end will be quite familiar with, uh, with the Air Force uh, making a lot of noise um, every now and then. <laughs> They've got uh, some quite significant uh, exercises um, on throughout the year. This year we'll see them uh, taking part in exercise pitch black, which will see uh, Air Forces from around the country uh, travelling to the top end uh, to take part in in a, uh, a quite a significant Air Force exercise. Yes, and Mel, it looks like we've now got the, uh, the Marine Rotational Force uh, to Darwin uh, marching in today's parade. This is the 11th year that we have seen the Marines uh, based in Darwin. Their, their size has grown quite significantly over the last uh, decade or so. There's uh, around 1,200 Marines uh, based in Darwin now this year. 
They're commanded by Colonel Chris Steele, uh, who is commanding the Marine Rotational Force uh, this year. There is also uh, Murph D Sergeant Major Justin Stokes. The Marines uh, will see them taking part in all sorts of training activities across the Northern Territory and throughout Northern Australia uh, while they're here. Uh, over the next the next six months or so, they'll take part in training exercises with uh, with the Australian Army as well as other international partners that will will come to take part in exercises over the next few months. Uh, again, I'm the uh, the uh, Marine presence around our bases in the north, so through Roberts and Barracks, RAF Base Darwin, and even down in the Larrakia precinct, is is quite established, and they're they're, they're very much part of the uh, the patchwork of of, of our military life here in Darwin. They uh, have taken part in Anzac Day marches um, in Darwin for the last few years, although um, this year for the first time, if anyone uh, was watching the dawn service, we uh, had one uh, United States Marine taking part in the catafalque party this morning for the first time ever. Um, they were invited uh, by the RSL and by the ADF um, to, to join in, which is quite significant for them. Yeah, I know for many of them, they're, they're very excited, or very uh, honoured to be part, um, to be part of this uh, ceremony for the, for Australia, and to help strengthen the bond that we have with our, with our U.S. friends in our alliance. Starting to see the uh, civilian part of the march um, coming in. Looks like we've got some scouts uh, starting to walk walk through. Yeah, and I think they've got the girl guides uh, walking there with them, the, uh, being led by Justine Count. Great to see so many young people uh, taking part, not only watching the march, but uh, but being able to actually uh, take part. I know when I was uh, in primary school, it was it was quite an honour to be able to uh, to march in the local um, Anzac Day Anzac Day commemorations. Yeah, it was always a great honour to be one of the the kids selected to lay the wreath for your school as well. So it's uh, it's great to see the kids participating. I suppose growing up uh, as a as a military kid yourself, it would have uh, would have been something that um, that you would have taken a lot of pride in being able to be a part of. Yeah, absolutely. I think we've attended the um, the dawn service and ANZAC services since I, I remember actually. So um, in various different forms, it's uh, it's always it's always a unique experience, but, but quite special. So that's the Dallin. Uh, looks like the band is rejoining the march. There again. As the uh, march sort of reaches reaches its end, we'll uh, take a look back at some of uh, the other stories, some of the Anzac stories um, across from uh, from previous years, and from the other side of the world in 1942, as Australians watched Nazi Germany march across Europe. The war seemed a long way away, but the territory. Uh, would soon be touched by the horrors of war. And now, 80 years on, one of the last survivors remembers the day that World War II came to Darwin. It was a tense day in Darwin in 1942 when Brian Winspear noticed a strange object glistening above the palm trees. 
you could see the sun glinting off the bombs. It was just like confetti coming down. Mr Winspear, now 101 years old, was serving in the Royal Australian Air Force when Japan started dropping bombs on Darwin. We had some very close uh, near, near misses and it blew my hat off and I got shrapnel in my hand and in my eye. And, and fires were burning everywhere and I was just saying, oh, yeah, yeah, we lost about eight or ten of our aircraft, they were just all burning. To this day, Japan's first air raid in Darwin on February 19, 1942, remains the largest single attack ever mounted by a foreign power on Australia. Dr Norman Cramp says it marked the beginning of a months-long onslaught. Around 230 to 250 people were killed on that first day, and over the, um, the nearly two years of bombings, um, around 1,700 people lost their lives. Mr Winspear says the attacks were so damaging and fast, there was no time to properly farewell the dead. If someone didn't come, come back, you, there was no mourning, no funerals, no anything. At one stage, I had to watch uh, 12 air crew blokes burn to death after their plane took off tail heavy. After narrowly escaping death a dozen times, Mr Winspear says the bombing of Darwin changed him forever. I mean, it made me a, a, a great believer in fate. You know, if something was going to happen, you never kicked against it. You, uh, you, you just took it as it came and several times uh, I was supposed to be doing something in the last minute, they changed, they changed it. And, uh, and, and, and the person that took my place in two or three cases, he was, uh, he was dead with a lot of others. If there's one thing Mr Winspear and Dr Cramp want to leave with Australians, it's the heartache caused by the Darwin bombing. The younger generations and the, and the current generations and the generations in the future are, are losing their memory of this. And the danger with history is if you forget it and you ignore it, you increase the chances of it um, repeating itself. Now, 80 years after witnessing death and destruction, Mr Winsby's image of Darwin has changed for the better. Oh, I think it's a nice place to go for a holiday. <laughs>
But when you read those reports, you just go, whoa, this is, this is full on. The truth he uncovered was nothing like the glamorised Anzac mythologies that had been passed down by his relatives. His great-grandfather, Augustus William Sinclair, was killed in gruesome hand-to-hand -hand combat, barely two days after setting foot on the beaches of Gallipoli. 43 other Australians and 86 Turks were all in the same trench, fighting. He hadn't been on land for more than 48 hours and he was dead. And that was probably the most confronting thing. So this is cut from the newspaper. Unlike most of the younger men there, Mr Sinclair was 32 years old, with kids and a wife. Through a different lens, his great-grandson now wondering what made him decide to travel to the other side of the world. Why? Why did you go? I'd really like to know that. You've got a wife and three kids. Reflecting on his great-grandfather's life at Gallipoli, Mr Archibald encouraged others to undertake their own family research. It's a bit like treasure hunting. Uh, a lot of the time you'll work and work and work and get nothing and then you'll, you'll go sideways and get this one jewel and then that leads you on to all these other amazing stories. Stories that will never be forgotten. Samantha Dick, ABC News. And flickering in the darkness as thousands of people gathered at the dawn service this morning was Darwin's eternal flame. It was a long-awaited monument which was officially switched on for the first time a year ago, finally bringing Darwin into line with every other capital city in the country. But there is something a little different about the top end's flame in that it's not really a flame at all, but it's lights designed to withstand Darwin's cyclone season. At that time... And the troops that a blessing and a smoking ceremony on Darwin's esplanade as the city's long-awaited eternal flame was ceremonially lit. For a hundred years we had the cenotaph, but no eternal flame. Every other city in Australia has got an eternal flame, burning always to remind people of the sacrifice that people made, gave their lives overseas in various places around the world, and of course some of them here in Australia, in Darwin. Representing eternal life commemorating fallen soldiers, it overlooks Darwin Harbour, where in 1942 the Second World War reached Australian shores. There was over 230-odd lives lost just out on that harbour there. Unlike all other eternal flames across the country, this one here in Darwin is completely electronic, all because of how cyclone-prone the city is. The official opening of the flame coincided with the centenary of the city's cenotaph in 2021, a celebration fit for the Governor-General, a former commander of Darwin's own 1st Brigade. Well, this brings our Anzac Day broadcast to an end. Thank you for joining us on the ABC for the street parade and other commemorations. A big thank you to Lieutenant Colonel Simone Patterson for, uh, sorry, Lieutenant Commander, I've just given you. <laughs> That's okay, <laughs> just giving you a promotion, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Simone Patterson uh, for helping us out this morning. Uh, your insights commentary were fantastic. Uh, thank you so much for your time. No, thank you very much, Mel. It's been an absolute pleasure to be here and I'm I'm very happy to have been able to contribute to the to the our commemorations today. Thank you very much. And uh, our uh, commemorations will be able to be viewed on ABC iView a little bit later on today. Thank you again for joining us and enjoy the rest of your day.